This week on Inside Boulder News, what you need to know as water starts to rise and spring runoff begins, exchange harmful weeds for native plants at Purge Your Spurge event, and pay-by-phone parking makes trips to downtown more convenient. Welcome to Inside Boulder News, I'm Ashley Prill. Every year around this time, the snow begins to melt in the high country and make its way downstream to local reservoirs. When the reservoirs fill and then start to spill, we see increased stream flows in Boulder and South Boulder Creeks. This year, the snowpack is at higher than normal levels, indicating a wet year pattern for spring runoff. In most wet years, um, the stream flows will be a little bit higher and you'll have some minor flooding issues. Um, like on the bike path underpasses. Exactly how the runoff occurs this year depends a lot on uh, weather and temperature conditions and uh, whether we get a lot of rain this spring. Um, if it's cooler, it'll tend to run off a little bit slower. If we have a lot of warm temperatures, it'll be higher. Generally, the peak flows in town here um, are less than a thousand cubic feet per second every spring, whereas um, during the September floods last year, right downtown in Boulder, I think the flow peaked around 5,000 cubic feet per second. The, the September floods we had in 2013 did cause stream conditions to change quite a bit. There was a lot of erosion and sediment deposition, and the city's been doing a lot of work on that. It remains to be seen how the, how the streams react as the flows come up this year, and uh, the city has a web website boulderfloodinfo.net where people can monitor conditions and, and if they have concerns that's probably the best place to start to see what's going on. While the snow melt is expected to increase flows in Boulder Creek, it may not have the same effect in your neighborhood. The snow that happens in the, in the high mountains near the Continental Divide that we use for our water supply, that generally collects in the mainstream here like Boulder Creek and you'll see that go up quite a bit. Again, that's fed by high elevations. Down in town, at, at lower elevations, there are a lot of smaller drainages that don't necessarily have a lot of snow. And the concern there would be more springtime thunderstorms and, and rain events that people should be concerned about. So if you have a small stream running through your backyard or next to your property, don't really need to be concerned about snow melt, but need to be keeping an eye on the weather for rainstorms and events like that. Again, for the one-stop resource for flood information in the city of Boulder, log on to boulderfloodinfo.net. The Integrated Pest Management Program is inviting all of Colorado to purge your spurge. Myrtle spurge is an invasive, harmful weed that's illegal in Colorado. If you pull the myrtle spurge from your property and bring it to Recycle Row on the morning of May 10th, you can exchange it for free native plants that haven't been treated with pesticides. But before you get pulling, there are a few things you should know. This is a good time to look for it in your yard because it is blooming. It has um, small yellow flowers on the plant, so it's pretty easy to identify. They really want to make sure that they wear heavy rubber gloves and that they wear eye protection as well. You can throw it in your trash. We do not recommend that you compost it. It's easy to pull and you, know, you don't need to use herbicide, you can just pull it up. But it produces a, um, a toxic sap that can cause blistering and redness. Um, one reason you might want to get rid of it, besides the fact that it's illegal, is because kids can get into it and you know, break out, have blisters and swelling. Some kids end up in the hospital due to it. So it's a good idea to get rid of it. The Colorado Noxious Weed Act prohibits myrtle spurge on all property and requires local governments to enforce this law. We are very education based. Most people don't even know they have it. So we contact them, we inform them what it is and why it's an issue, and then we work with them on a reasonable timeline for them to eradicate it. Crews of Wildlands Restoration Volunteers are already working on removing myrtle spurge across the Front Range. If you aren't able to treat a myrtle spurge infestation on your property, even if it's relatively small, they may be able to help. More than happy to talk to people and offer them any sort of counseling on how to remove their infestation or where to point them in the direction of any resources that might be helpful. And I'm always looking for new areas too because my job is actually part of a grant and so it's a two-year term. We've gotten funding to be able to do this work which is wonderful. Um, so I am also looking for target areas for next year. 
Gates open at 9 a.m. for the Purge or Spurge event at Recycle Row and will go until noon. In addition to free native plants, you can also purchase a garden in a box from the Center for Resource Conservation. For more information about the event, log on to bouldercolorado.gov IPM. If you're interested in volunteering to help your neighbors get rid of Myrtle Spurge, log on to wlrv.org. Or if you need help getting rid of Myrtle Spurge, contact Lauren Polis directly by email or phone. The City of Boulder has partnered with Park Mobile to provide a new convenient way to pay for parking. Instead of going to a kiosk, waiting for a ticket, and placing it on the dash, you can use an app on your cell phone to pay for parking. Our park enforcement officers have software that's provided by Park Mobile that allows them to scan license plates and know who's paid by phone. Um, so customers won't have to have the, the receipt on their dashboard, the the park enforcement officers will be able to know just by scanning the license plate that they've indeed paid for parking, how long um, they have left on their time. In the past, if you were running out of time on your parking meter, you had two options. You either continued with what you were doing and, and got a parking ticket for expired uh, parking, or you had to stop what you were doing, go back to your car, get more time, put a new ticket in your dash, and then go back to, to your shopping or your eating. Um, with pay by phone, you no longer have to do that. All you, you'll get a text message 15 minutes prior to your time expiring. And with that text message, you'll have the option to add more time um, to your parking. And you'll be able to do it right there from the convenience of the restaurant or the store, wherever you may be. There is a 35 cent convenience charge for each transaction. You can download the app on your phone by searching for Park Mobile. You can use pay by phone anywhere you see the pay by phone parking signs. They are available citywide for the Pearl Street Mall, University Hill, and Boulder Junction. To learn more about paying by phone, log on to bouldercolorado.gov slash parking dash services. In other parking news, the city has chosen a winner for the University Hill Parklet Competition. A parklet repurposes portions of the street or parking areas into public amenities like seating, art, and landscaping. Opportunity Knox by the Doors Open team was chosen as the city's first parklet, which will also serve as a pilot to provide valuable information for future installations. Recycled window doors, benches, and landscaping will be used to transform two to three on-street parking spaces on University Hill into temporary public space. Construction will begin next week and is expected to finish by May 19th. The parklet will remain in place until the end of October. A new temporary public art project came to life this week at 1301 Arapahoe Avenue. The mural titled Bot Stories Boulder by artist Gary Hirsch was inspired by tiny robots Hirsch has been making for the past four years. This one uh, is a joy bot. It's programmed to give you joy. Uh, this one is bot number 25,928. So I've made a lot of them. Um, I'm sort of obsessed with making them. And the way they work is uh, it's just a domino, really. It's just painted on domino but uh, it's designed to sit and watch you for a while and then it'll give you outrageous compliments when you do great things you know like that was a really smart thing you said and you're wearing really nice pants or whatever it'll just say nice things to you after sharing his tiny bots around the world he wanted to take his art to a new level his mural across from boulder high school is 16 feet tall it's an interactive mural the idea is that after these things go up each robot's going to have a different question on it what brings you joy what do you need help with? What's your dream? Who do you love? And I'm really, really curious to make art that sort of continues after it's made, where audiences kind of keep the story going, hence bot stories. So the invitation is for people to take their pictures in front of these murals and to answer the questions using sort of hashtags. Bot stories and bot joy are the hashtags so their pictures and their answers can live on. The mural will be finished by May 3rd and is expected to stay up for about a year. To find out more about Hirsch's work, log on to botjoy.com. Thank you for watching Inside Boulder News. Stay in touch with us on Facebook and Twitter by submitting news tips and questions. You can also sign up to receive video updates right in your inbox. Just go to boulderchannel8.com and click on subscribe.